and and indeed the Chinese in New York now there's also a big Chinese parent movement because Bill de Blasio and his utterly terrifying yeah, schools he's a real chancellor piece of work, that guy. Carranza yeah. are trying to destroy again every meritocratic standard get rid of it it's all going to be based on quotas um, so the Chinese parents there are are protesting the destruction of Stuyvesant High School and yeah. Bronx but on the other hand it's really a race against time because Harvard in its recent lawsuit uh, uh, defending itself against Ed Blum and the and the challenge to its its discrimination against Asians, they assembled a big crew of Asian Harvard students who were defending preferences. And so, can you explain what their rationale was? I heard I heard a couple versions of this. Uh, just diversity, and you know we got in, so like it didn't hurt us. But right. but they, I think the rationale is is that the lure of identity politics and being anti-white is the key to the elite. That elite identity in this country now is, is against establishment values and it's against meritocracy and it's a, it's a commitment to the idea of white supremacy. So to the extent that colleges can end up cloning Asian students in their own image of identity politics, and it, it is happening. I mean, you can go to UC Berkeley you know, the, the degree of, of uh, specialization of the different ethnic groups there, you know, so you have the Filipino club and the, and the you know, Samoan club, where everybody, there's power in victimhood. And, you know, the, the sort of laughable irony is that, so a lot of these left-wing Asian students want to be viewed as a students of color. You know, please, right. please, we're students of color as right. well. The irony is, is that the administration said, no, you're not students of color. You don't count if they're students right. of color. Right, your minority thing doesn't count. You're white. For the sake of, of our quotas, your guys are white. So the poor students are, wait a minute, wait a minute, right. why, why don't we get to be students but, but of color? But now they're they're super white. They're not just white, right? Like they're extra they're, they, white they, now. They, they, they trump whites, that's right. Whites are, are, are uh, actually you know, get preferences over Asians. So I don't know. That's a, it's a really good question about self-interest versus ideology. And again, the lure of ideology, and we see this also with Indians, Indian Americans in, in this culture. The that'll, be the Indigen, that'll be the next one. They're right? very left-wing. Mm -hmm. But do you think that, that they'll sort of suffer the fate of Chinese Americans or something like that, and that eventually it'll turn on them too? And Yeah, they're discriminating against. I mean, the head of Google, the guy who fired James Damore for writing, you've talked about yeah. this, you know, a perfectly fact-based memo about psychological truths, things yeah. that the psychology profession has known for years about the big five personality traits, one of which, unfortunately, is called neuroticism. And poor poor Mr. Innocent Damore yeah. used the word neuroticism and everybody freaked out, but that's, sorry, that's the psychology terms. Um, James Damore, who, by the way, had gotten a promotion for his job just two months before yeah, the memo. He's, yeah. he's a perfect, he's a fantastic, <laughs> he's a fantastic engineer. He would have yeah. helped Google, but God forbid he put females at risk for yeah. saying that, the reason there's not more females here is because average distribution of personality, you know, preferences. Anyway, but Sundar Pichai, he's Indian American, you know. So and and a lot of the schools chancellors in the University of California uh, that are doing all of the multiculturalism BS, they're Indian engineers. So it's very curious the trans thing. A lot of the parents are Indian. So again, it shows the gravitational force of victim identity, that that is how you credentialize yourself to enter the American elite, is to buy into this idea that this is a racist and sexist society. So you just briefly mentioned the trans thing there. Have you read uh, Douglas Murray's Madness of Crowds by any chance? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I think he brilliantly does is he separates the T from LGB. He says right. these things have nothing to do with, e right. with each other. Right. Do you basically take that uh, position yeah. and sort of see why the trans movement has sort of spun off into something that's completely not about equality now and yeah it's, about it's so very clearly a power play why anybody takes these 14 16 year olds seriously at face value the the desire of every adolescent is power it is to be able to bend adults and the world to your will and this is the most brilliant. We call this Greta Thunberg uh, exactly. syndrome. <laughs> but to be trans has even more power because you can 
trip people up in an ever more arcane linguistic thicket. And if they make the most innocuous linguistic error, they are guilty. And so you are, it is a, a way of asserting power over the world and, and it's endlessly fertile and fecund. It generates more and more categories. Uh, and it is something amazingly, I mean, nobody thought about this five years ago and now we're all supposed to believe that this represents some essential truth about human nature where, again, it is just a way of clawing to the top of the viciously competitive totem pole of victimhood and being top dog for as long as it lasts, you know, and who knows, you know, big, big sweepstake award to whoever can come up with the next victim that will dethrone the trans identity, but it will come. Right, that, and that's gonna be a big one. Like yeah. what, what that what, one could what, possibly be. We just all be, wait, you know, it's yeah, something yeah. fun to look forward to. Right, so I take it when Biden said that uh, when you're going to jail, you should be able to pick which prison yeah. you go to decide, dependent on your decision about your own gender. You're, you're not a big fan no, of that. No, but again, look at, look at the power. There <laughs> yeah. you are a prisoner and you right. get to flip the tables and say now you, state prison authority or federal prison authority, you have to bend to my will. Uh, it's just incredible. I, I remember the time it was, maybe summer of 2014, the Times ran a front full page editorial announcing the dawn of the trans era, that this was the new civil rights campaign. And it's just not true. Again, there's a very minute number of people for whom this is authentically a psychological disorder, but I think for most of it, it, I've talked at college campuses, and I don't really address the trans phenomenon, but in one talk at St. Olaf, I just gave, a, I read a section, a, a piece of prose that was written by some trans guy who was all, his head was all like tied in knots because he was trying to figure out when his gay friends called each other she and her in a gay rhetoric, and then they referred to, this trans person, Alex, as she and her, whether they were re respecting his identity, disrespecting her, and I thought, and my point was, <laughs> this is so this, trivial. Yeah. This is so trivial. You guys should be thinking about things outside of yourself. How about you lose yourself in the past? That's difference. So, I, but that was my only reference to this. And this girl came up to me afterwards and said, you're not ex respecting my identity. This was just, again, another pitch for power. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, where it goes, but it, it's, it's ridiculous. It is not something that is the, a civilizational truism. You know, this is something we should all take that seriously. Yeah, this seems to be the one, I think, that is actually helping, let's say, our side the most. Really? Because it is so patently absurd if you just can't say that there are biological differences between men and women. That doesn't make you a bigot, it doesn't make you a transphobe, it doesn't mean you hate women. Yeah. But we, but it's something that we all just like, we just know, right? My, my four-year-old niece knows there's a difference between boys and girls. She's yeah. not a rocket scientist. So something, it's almost like this one, they overshot to the point really? that it might cause a little bit of a bounce back, which goes to, again, my prediction of the implosion of this thing. But Look at North Carolina. I, I don't know. I mean, there you had this conservative state mm -hmm. that buckled under corporate pressure. Again, corporations, everybody thinks there's AOC thing. Oh, big business, evil, white supremacy. No. But you can get them to do almost anything. Corporations. They've all got the CEOs have wives. Wives are disaster. You know, they push their they push husbands to the left, uh -huh. and they have human resources departments. As as the Google employees said in one of the chat rooms after Demore was fired, we have to kick this thing back because our HR department, known in Googly language as people analytics, because mm -hmm. you can't just call it human human resources. He said it's just an outpost of women's studies and black studies now. Uh, so these corporations are are promoting the trans thing and. Far too many parents are. I mean, I, I did think that when the dictates started coming down that parents have to let their girl, their daughters have biological males in their locker rooms and bathrooms, that there would be just pitchfork battles. And it didn't happen. I keep waiting for the massive rejection of this. It's not happening. School after school district 
is enacting trans policies. So you show me where, besides the Navitarova and, and, and Rowlings, yeah. that this is actually put any kind of dent in this crusade. Well, I think I think Ricky Gervais' speech at the Golden Globes where he just torched identity politics and torched this very town that we're in right now. I think yeah. the J.K. Rowling thing, I think Martina speaking up and then her, them attacking her about trans yeah. athletes. I think, the, I think it's just starting to bubble up. Okay. Wh which way that goes, we don't know, but I think there. I think it's people are getting a little bit braver. I hope so. Don't burn this book. Comes out on April twenty eighth, and it's it's about giving people I'm the keys sure. the keys to the bravery thing. Believe me, we, everybody's got it in their uh, calendar marks. Yeah. So.